Well, Laura and I are off to Chicago for some fun. Actually, a buddy of ours has a reptile place called Chicago Reptile House. It's a pretty cool place. You've never been, right? Probably not. No, I, I don't, don't think, think you so. have. Because I've only been there once, and I know it wasn't with you. So, uh, yep. So yeah, you did never go. So, <laughs> so we're we're off on a five-hour drive. Gonna go check out a really cool reptile pet shop. We made it here to Chicago Reptile House. I'm excited to go in and see. My buddy Brian owns the place. I've been here once before years ago. So let's go in and see what they've got going on. One of the things you may not know about me is that when I was younger, of course, I worked at a fish store when I was 15 years old. We had reptiles as well, but I've always loved fish stuff. And I used to go to pet shops every single day. Not only the one I worked at, but I would make a round of like three or four pet shops every single day from the time I was like 14, 15, till I was probably 20, 21, and I got too busy with the reptile business. But I used to literally every single day, seven days a week, go to two, three, four pet shops just to look around because I love them so much. So coming to any pet shop is absolutely amazing. It brings back those memories of when I was younger. I wish I still had time because I love going to pet shops. And here we are. This is actually the reptile section of the Chicago Reptile House. Again, they have a fish store, they have a bird side, so it's all really cool, right? But look at all the reptiles. Lori, what do you think? Yeah, there's a lot of really cool stuff here. I know. Does it bring you back to your reptile pet shop days? Oh, yeah. As soon as he walked in the door, I was like, wow, take me back to being 18 again. <laughs> <laughs> 18 and working on But there's so much cool stuff. I mean, look at the little baby sulcata here. They are so absolutely adorable. It's amazing to think that Speedy was one day this size. Uh, we yeah. should pull one of these guys out. And again, look at how absolutely adorable these guys are. Uh, I, you know, this is basically the size that they're born at, and they are so cute. It's amazing to think that this is like the third largest tortoise species on the planet so this one day can be 150 pounds or something like that of course it does take a long time so how to do live for 150 years or so but it's always so cute when you see a little baby sulcata taurus and then look at all these little baby bearded dragons they actually look really super healthy too you know when they're this size they eat a lot so to keep this many in an enclosure you definitely have to feed them a tremendous amount now again chicago reptile house has been around for literally like 25 plus years so it's kind of a state of the Chicago area and I'm so happy that my friend owns it and allows me to come here and mess with his animals. Had to stop here because there's some really cool stuff so uh, we'll just keep on looking. Brian actually also has been in the ball python game for a long time so he breeds a lot of ball pythons and they're really beautiful things. This happens to be a banana sugar ball python just really cool. That sugar gene is that calico gene you know it's got that white up its sides. Absolutely wonderful mix with the banana thing. It's just cool again I just am always ear to ear smiles when I'm in a pet shop and uh, I I love it and it's cool that this place has just been around for so so long. These are some fresh has pastel clown ball pythons but very interesting pattern wise. I mean definitely different than any clown ball python that I've seen before. Just really interesting the way that kind of zigzagly almost looks like it has a puzzle gene in it or something like that but these aren't actual puzzles so and in a sense they're a puzzle not knowing what they are but they're not actually the puzzle gene. Really interesting animals and super super pretty. Then we have these ripper clown ball pythons. Pythons. These are actually banana clown ball pythons, possibly that have fire gene in them. But the thing that I think that's really interesting about these is look at the orange in those animals right there. Almost looks like there's an entry gene in there too. Again, I don't know the genetics behind it. I'm just taking a look at things that are hatching here. But I definitely know they're banana clowns and they probably have at least one other gene in them that makes them absolutely beautiful. And I remember seeing the first banana clown ball pythons down at the Arlington NARBC, which ironically enough was put on by Brian and Bob, the owner of this pet shop. So that's pretty cool. And I saw that animal and I was blown away by it. And now, of course, we work with banana clowns too. But every time we hatch them, they are absolutely stunning. And again, some more cool stuff that Brian has hatched out here. These are actually albino pied ball pythons. Again, the albino is recessive. The pied is recessive. Really cool, just neat animals. Again, they're not even shed. These are only a day or two old, just on the egg. When they shed out, they'll even look more beautiful and have a little bit more contrast for sure. I love albino pied stuff. Definitely, that two combinations are are wonderful. You guys probably don't know this, but like the third or fourth reptile I ever bought, believe it or not, 
was a little green iguana. That's right. And uh, of course, you can never guess what name it was. It was named Iggy. That's right. It was. I had Iggy the iguana, and they are so cute. Uh, they definitely get big, and they need a lot of space and time. Of course, now we have you know Tabasco and Sriracha, and of course Heinz and Frenches, and of course the rhinos and stuff like that. But there's still something really cute about just a little green iguana, and having a whole tank full of them is absolutely adorable. Take a look at this little monkey right here. This is actually a mangrove monitor. Now, I, you know, I've gotten so into monitor lizards over the last few years. They have just really stolen my heart. And the mangroves are cool. I mean, I love their pattern and color. When they get bigger, they lose some of this freckling, so they're not quite as pretty as they are when they're young. And of course, they are great climbers, but they also love water too. But this guy has little daggers for fingers for sure. Uh, it is so cute. I tell you what, baby monitors, they steal my heart every time I see them. Well, it's certainly not every day that you can handle an Amazon tree boa and not get bit. You guys know Lucky is definitely not that way and the majority of them are pretty feisty but this one is actually really chill. It doesn't seem to have any kind of defensive posture to it. Isn't trying to bite or anything like that and I definitely need a female to try to breed Lucky to. Unfortunately this is a male too so this isn't going to help me but this color is really cool. That's the thing that's neat about Amazon tree boas is they're so polymorphic when it comes to the color. In one litter you can literally have reds, yellow, grays, oranges, all different colors and it's really cool. This one is a pretty darn awesome looking snake. So of course Lori always gravitates to tortoises. <laughs> These are Russian tortoises. I know, they're so cute. Of course the thing that's nice about Russian tortoises, they don't get that big so you can keep them in a relatively small area and they are super cute. I know. You like it? <laughs> oh, I love them. They're I know. So cute. I know we they need are. more tortoises. We do need more tortoises. <laughs> but where are we going to put more tortoises? I Matilda, have an idea. Oh, which by the way, I didn't tell Lori. Matilda was out the other day. Destroyed your gift shop. Destroy. I'm talking like knock down shelves. Yeah. Destroyed the gift I shop. Know, so I, I fixed it up so I didn't get in trouble because I knew if I I let her know she was going to yell at Thank me. You. So uh, Thank so it's you. all good. But uh, Matilda <laughs> is uh, yeah. Matilda isn't quite as uh, no. <laughs> gentle as this little monkey right here. Cool little wall of like little baby colubrids and little fat tail geckos and stuff like this. This is, of course the little Mexican black king snakes. You guys know that I love these guys for sure. But there's a lot of cool animals and I like this for a display for a pet shop for sure. Kind of works out really well because you can fit a lot of animals in a relatively small area. Area, but yet they're displayed pretty well and so there's a lot of cool stuff black and white cow kings all kinds of cool little animals in here and of course as we travel here to Chicago and have a good time at my buddy's pet shop uh, things are going crazy at the shop you know they're always nuts you know Mike Jay them together they uh, what possibly can go wrong right so uh, let's go ahead and throw it back and find out what they're going on because I just got a phone call saying that they are absolutely out of control so we'll take a break from this and I'll see you guys in a second hi Jay I'm like, I haven't seen you like all day. Mike, can we just do this? Yeah, let's just do this. Oh my god, it's already literally wants to attack you. Just don't slaughter through the poop, please. Neither. You're gonna just grab the poop? I don't Absolutely. really want to. Look at that piece. Just came out. It's hot. Grab it so you can throw it out real quick so we don't slaughter through the poop. You got it, buddy. I can't do it. Yeah, you can. You got this. I can't. You're I gotta right. get it with This is comedy gold. Oh my god, she's so mad. Okay, here's the poop. Alright. Where's the trash can? We don't know. Where's the trash can? I thought you knew. Where's the trash can? Get the trash can, Michael. I don't Michael, get the trash. All right, all right, I'll be right back. Okay. okay. Please take the. Take the trash can, Mike. Mike, the trash. I can't look at it. Okay, I gotta sit down. No, 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 no. He's almost here. I quit. I'm I done. found it. There was like three buildings down. I, don't I already know. put it back, so now you have to pick it up. I was gone for like Mike, ten yeah, minutes. Get her in the tub. 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 What does that thing bite? Does it bite? Uh, okay. I believe in you, Jay. You got this. Mike, walk with the snake. Walk it. Booyah, you got it, Jay. Get Thank it. you, Bruce, because yeah, Mike I sucked. I didn't see Mike help at all. No. Oh, I Mike, I'm sorry, I grabbed the wrong snake. <laughs> I grabbed the wrong snake. That wasn't Daisy. <laughs> Get her in. What are you doing? Oh. This is why I'd rather do things alone. I hate this guy sometimes. Hey, 
take a look at this young little rhino iguana here. This just puts a smile on my face because I'm thinking of those few eggs that we still have from Diddy and Dixie, praying that they make it. We still have about two months of incubation left. Hopefully we'll have some little baby iguanas, but I tell you what, this one's got a little bit of size to it and it's starting to calm down. You remember when Diddy and Dixie was the size, they were out of control. I mean, you were chasing around, they were biting you, pooing on you, everything like this. So this one's actually pretty cool and I know that this blue dot here means it's a male. A lot of people that breed iguanas, they'll put blue dots for males and then pink dots for females just so that when they sell them, they know what they are because once you put them together, it's really hard to figure out which one is which, right? Because they look a lot alike when they're babies. As they get bigger, you can really tell males and females because of their head shape. The female's gonna have a much more narrow head, Males will have that thicker head and stuff like that. But nevertheless, this thing is absolutely amazing. For this size to be this docile, that's pretty awesome. So hopefully, there'll be baby iguanas in our future. I absolutely love little tegus. It's crazy to think that they can get so large and they start off at this size. Of course, this is a red tegu, just like tamale. And this is the way he looked like as a baby. And then as they get bigger, of course, they get that beautiful red color. These are the Argentines. Now, the Argentines are obviously a little bit more tame and more handled and stuff. Like that you can also get Columbia's not reds but black and whites that are a little bit more kind of touchy to be totally honest with you so this guy is absolutely amazing I think we're gonna probably have to start with a baby tegu to really get a tame one because you guys know tamales not the greatest when it comes to handling but uh, if you get them as a youngster and really handle them like this size they get super tame and become amazing animals so uh, chances are I'm gonna have to start with a little one and raise it up but it's gonna take a couple years so tamale or whatever tegu we decide to have on display will be there for the next couple years and then we get a little baby like like this and it'll be an absolutely amazing animal ambassador. Jay wanted to hold her. Did you put her on my shoulders? Mike, don't do that. I don't know why you did this to yourself. Uh, should I tell you now that she's peeing now? Is she? Yeah. With me? I got her! I'm doing it! Dad, I'm doing it! Uh oh. I'm doing it. <laughs> Is it peeing? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Oh no. You feel it dripping down? No, right I don't. There. Oh no! Okay, I'm all done. Wait, can I pick him up with this thing? Ow! Pee! Oh my god, I really hope she pees right now. <laughs> it's actually really salty. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Mike, get her! Mike, get her! Get her! Get her! <laughs> okay. Good job, Jay. I'm proud of you. I can't believe you actually held her up like that. Yeah, I'm, I'm strong. I've been going to the gym, actually. Uh, have you? Yeah. Really? Can't uh, come on. You you can't tell? I don't see you every day. I don't know. Oh. Jay, can you tell that I've been going to the gym? Jay. Jay. I've been going to the gym. You have a moment to talk about how we're sick? Well, had an absolutely amazing time here. There's no doubt about it. If you're in the Chicago area, you gotta stop by and see this place. Whether you're into birds, you're into fish, you're into reptiles, they have a little bit of everything here. Absolutely recommend it. Wonderful place, and again, my friends own it, and they're absolutely incredible. Uh, one of the cooler pet shops for sure. Definitely the best reptile shop in Chicago. There's no doubt about that. So definitely show them love. But for now, Lori and I are hitting the road and heading back home. And yeah, you can't tell me that we aren't the only ones that drive four and a half hours one way to go to a pet shop. <laughs> <laughs> it was well worth it. It was definitely a good time. But uh, did you have fun, Lauren? I did. Did you? Yeah. See? Chicago's awesome. Stuff. Yeah, Chicago's cool too. So uh, we are now heading back to the shop. So we'll see you there. And I'm back at the shop. You know, we had an absolutely amazing time traveling out. You know, checked out Chicago a little bit. Of course, my buddy's Chicago Reptiles was amazing. Let me know how you guys like that. But you know what? I always love being back. And we actually had some baby snakes hatch that I get to come home to, which is pretty cool. This is literally just a super enchy pinstripe bread to a normal. So what we have here is everything is going to be enchy because it's super enchy, obviously. We have some super enchy pinstripes here. We have some just normal, really beautiful enchies. This is actually a really nice looking enchy here. You know, for some some reason it's got a lot of blushing in it which is kind of unusual so uh, basically what happens again because of the super enchi pin everything is enchi so it has to either be enchi pinstripe or it has to be an enchi basically that's all you can get out of this clutch so there's no real surprises here but nevertheless pretty cool stuff love coming back to baby snakes every time I come back here I'm like what the hatch out I cannot wait and then this was actually kind of an interesting clutch this is an alila clutch which is a puma which is a yellow belly spark again alila meaning that when I breed it to a normal which I did in this one 
one, everything has to be either yellow belly or it has to be spark. And it's kind of interesting because a yellow belly and a spark is kind of a similar animal. Right here you can see a really good example of a yellow belly ball python. You've got that really crazy belly pattern right there and stuff like that. And then you can kind of go through and the ones that aren't quite as much are spark animals. Like I think this one is a spark. This is definitely a spark here. It doesn't have that crazy yellow belly. But I'll be honest with you, when you get into these allelic animals like pumas and highways, very difficult to tell the difference between a yellow belly and a spark or a yellow belly and a gravel when it comes to the highway stuff. So we'll have to take a really close look at these guys and figure out which ones are which, but uh, nevertheless, cool clutches, awesome time. Good to see animals away. It was well worth the trip and it was awesome to come back and see some baby snakes. If you enjoyed this video, do me a favor, right here, hit that playlist for me. I would appreciate you much. On this side, you can hit that subscription because that would mean a lot to me too. Have an absolutely wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, be kind to somebody, and I promise I'll see you in the next one.